Thank you. Um, so my name is Ivana and I'm going to tell you about my experience with um, how, how it was for me to learn to code from online courses. Um, to do that, um, I have to start with a bit, uh, going a bit back in time, actually quite a lot. Um, I went to a very small primary school and we didn't really have a computer class. What little we did learn was confined to what our math and physics teacher knew and how motivated he was to teach us. So um, I didn't have uh, much contact with um, computers or internet in pro or programming in a primary school. Uh, and it was kind of similar in uh, high school. Um, and now I'm not saying that school is responsible for me not learning to code or anything, but if you're a kid living in a rural area and it's 90s and uh, computers are scarce and there's not a good internet connection, that kind of matters. Um, so uh, it was not that I wrote my first um, program until I uh, came to the university. I studied physics at the university here in Ljubljana and in the first year I came into the computer science class and without any introduction we were supposed to write our first program in code, uh, in C. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, I, I didn't know what any of it means. Like what does it mean to include some library or what are the semicolons at the end of the lines? What does return zero do and how the hell do you compile a program? Uh, now, we were told to just copy and paste and not think too much about the particulars and kind of unfortunately that's how the rest of the class went. Our teaching assistant was very motivated to discuss programming with people who already knew more than they were going to learn in that class and the rest of us were just kind of left to ourselves. I didn't get enough out of that class to realize that program is, programming is something that I will have to know and use in the future. And then. Um, Two years later, I came to another class where we were actually supposed to do a project and they involved a lot of programming. And we were just told to use um, any programming language we prefer, which is great if you don't know any. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of, um, you know, learn to swim when you were thrown in the water. And it was hard and frustrating and there was a lot of trial and error, but I also think that I learned a lot in that class. And it, I think it's still one of the favorites that I had in my curriculum. So. Um, that was good, but what started to bother me after a while was that I had no real uh, sense if what the code I've written was any good. Um, th for one thing, I was the only user of my code. So um, I didn't worry about commenting or about wrong inputs, what would happen then, or memory issues or any of that. So that was definitely one of the um, things that uh, where I could definitely improve my knowledge. Another thing, um, another thing was that I had no sense of how much I actually know, and I wanted to get kind of the whole the picture. Uh, if I know, if I actually know the basics of programming languages, and um, so I turned to online courses. Um, there's plenty of options, so that's a good thing. They are interactive, they feature um, lectures and uh, additional materials are linked and there are quizzes and um, assignments, so I thought that, that that was quite promising. And of course, they're supposed to be very easy, all of them. <laughs> uh, I used um, I, or tried to some extent at least quite a lot, some of them I'm listing here. Now, not all are, um, there are actually different kind of courses. Uh, some are massive open online courses, some are just like online learning platforms, but I'll kind of just be talking about um, different kinds today. Now there's more, of course, and I'm just listing a few here, but um, the internet, uh, if, you, if you Google them, there's really, really a lot more. Um, now, what I liked or didn't like, what I thought was good or bad, first thing that quickly started to bother me was that everyone was saying programming is easy, um, which for one thing was not my experience. And if someone is telling you that something is easy and you're experiencing it as hard, then you're likely think, well, 
I guess I'm not smart enough or I'm not cut out for it and that's the easiest way to quit. So I don't think that that is actually a good approach and I think that that is a one thing that the, one of the bad things that these uh, courses tend to do. I'm not saying that all of them claim that it is easy, but sometimes uh, such claims are also disguised as it's going to be, um, it's going to be cool or, um, or awesome or you're going to have fun because that's the only reason why we learn or so what. Uh, and anyway, um, that is something that I really, really don't like. Um, I think that also the development community realizes that problem to some extent. For example, I found the article by Scott Hanselman. Um, you may know, uh, know of him. He's a Microsoft developer and he's very um, popular on Twitter. I follow him anyway and he wrote a pretty good article titled um, um, Stop saying that learning to code is easy or something like that. And in it, he says terrible things about coding. He says that it's going to be hard and all sorts of other uh, things that may w make you want to quit. But then he goes on and say that it's also going to be pretty awesome. Now, I'm not going to read everything that he says. I think you can see it on a projector. But I think that that kind of motivation not only has the advantage of being true, but it is far more likely to get you through the harder times when you hit the problems in um, your uh, programming uh, uh, lessons. So one of the first that I tried uh, quite extensively was Code Academy, Code Academy. Uh, and I think it actually it is pretty good uh, for absolute beginners. It's uh, minimalistic and easy to use. Uh, on the left side, in the upper left corner, you have the um, topic explained. Uh, and then you're giving the instructions of what you're supposed to do. Then there is an emulation of an editor where you write your code. And on the right, uh, if you click um, Save and Submit Code, you see the output uh, right away on the right. Now, that is not a very realistic representation of programming, but it's a good way to see uh, what happens if you write some code and what, what kind of output will you get. Um, th then, um, uh, I want to just say this, that sometimes, it actually is a bit, um, it is very easy. Sometimes it actually just boils down to copying and pasting from the left side to the right side and that is it. Additionally, you are given hints and access to glossary and uh, forum. So it's a lot of actual help and it might make things a bit too easy. I'm not sure that, uh, that you learn uh, a lot that way. Also, there's a lot of praise. For everything that you do well, you get a badge. I finished three courses on Code Academy and I got 68 badges. <laughs> um, so this constant praise, uh, while it's a nice encouragement, may make you feel like you're, uh, like might, might give you a false sense of achievement. Because, OK, great, you finished the course on Code Academy. You did something. But it's a very small first step. Um, there's a similar problem with Code School, who is uh, quite a lot like uh, Code Academy, but it has a bit more content, and there are additional um, video lectures uh, in it, which uh, are not uh, part of the Code Academy. They also shower you with praise. <laughs> like, I don't think that the fact that I used, basically used the calculator warrants uh, animated fireworks, <laughs> um, but that's what happened. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, so. Uh, one of the platforms that I really like is Linda. It's a bit more advanced. Now, it does say that you will um, learn a hot new uh, language Python, which has at least two um, problematic adjectives in them. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you can set your path. Like you can say, I want to be a Python developer. And it gives you a set of courses that you, uh, that you should follow. Some are very basic. Like, first one is the introduction. But even though it is an introduction, you don't just meet the basic uh, concept. You actually quickly progress to harder topics. And you, uh, additionally to that, uh, to, the, to the lectures, like you can see that there are 22 hours of lectures on that path, uh, you get assignments. And there are a lot of them. And that is a good thing. Um, you can download them as a Py iPython notebook, Jupyter Notebooks, um, as it calls now. 
um, and uh, you get a version without the solution and a version with solution. So I think that's really good. If you apply yourself here and really try to solve these uh, problems on, on your own, I think that that is a really good way to learn. Um, so yeah, I like Lind a lot. A uh, similar one is um, Pluralsight. Also, it has pads. Uh, there are quite, um, some of them are quite advanced. It's not just for, uh, uh, for people who want to be programmers, but also if you're in marketing or, uh, um, or um, I don't know, um, digital, uh, you work as a social media expert. And one thing that I really like at Pluralsight is that they have the option to measure your skill at the beginning. So you, you kind of are given like a test and you actually see where you stand and where you should go, uh, where you should um, go, uh, which course you should start with so that you don't have to repeat all the basics that, that can get a bit tedious. Um, now, I would just like to quickly mention the massive open online courses. Um, I think that they are basically great. Uh, it's a very good thing. I think we have that everyone in the world has the access to the top educational classes in the world. Like, I mean, I'm not saying that that actually means that you go to Harvard, but it's still good that you can listen to the lectures from there. They're often very high quality, so that, that's really good, I think. Um, they also foster a sense of community with the forum and uh, peer-reviewed peer assignments. I think that is one very good aspect. So they try to emulate the sense of a classroom and having like a, um, co a school colleagues uh, to the, to the uh, extent as it is possible when it is an online course. Uh, I also like that um, at, at least one of the uh, courses that I went through, um, professor, uh, provided additional explanatory videos after the uh, students on the forum uh, said that they didn't understand the topic well enough. I think that is really good and useful. Um, now, one thing about the uh, massive open online courses, they usually have a, uh, you have to uh, enroll in them and then they have a starting date and you get the deadlines by when you have to uh, finish your assignments. So, I mean, that is really up to anyone. Maybe it's a push you need the, to have a deadline to finish the, Thing, but if you prefer to work on your own pace, then that may be a bit harder, especially if you have a job and anything and you wanna, um, not, don't have that much time to, to go through them. Now, of course, there are also uh, sometimes, um, not all of them are great. I, I managed to find one on Coursera that was a bit too basic. I didn't like that it, that it says that there will be very little math because I don't think that's something that you should be advertising to the programmers. You will have to know math if you want to program, I think. Uh, it also, it featured seven weeks and on the week three there was a first um, coding program to be written and it was some very basic uh, program. So I'm not sure that you get enough exercise in a course like that. But there's just one not very well example. I actually finished quite a few pretty good ones on Coursera or other uh, massive open online courses platform. So I really, um, I really um, recommend those. Um, I just want to spend a moment to talk about um, the price of these courses. Some of them are free. Some of the, those that I mentioned uh, were free at some point, but I don't think any of them are at the moment. Basically, all of them uh, went for some form of monetization. In some cases, you just have to pay for certificate, which is a good, uh, which you can uh, avoid if you just want to learn and you don't really want the certificate. Uh, then it doesn't really cost you anything. Some of them have the option to upgrade to pro, and as a pro user, you get the access to additional materials. That often includes um, exercises and assignments, which are actually something that you really want to do if you want to learn. So. Um, Maybe, um, so the, uh, the pay, uh, maybe the, up, the pro option is not a bad idea in these cases. And some of them, um, uh, some of them um, are payable for even for a basic access. But in, even in those, those cases, you usually get a free trial period, so you can um, at least test if that is some, something for you. And you know, people should be paid for their work, so. It, um, it's not wrong that they uh, want money for it. <laughs> uh, so what have I learned? First, what have I learned about the online courses? 
um, not all courses are equal. Some, uh, some are better suited for beginners, some for advanced users. I think that if you manage to find the one that suits you, you can benefit from it very greatly. Um, if you, uh, if you, um, you, you may be able to find extremely well done um, explanations for uh, certain topics in them, so uh, the quality can be really great. Uh, now, um, how to measure success? There was a um, study done by Harvard not long ago, and they discovered that only 4% of users that start uh, massive open online courses actually finish them. That is like a low number, but still, maybe a lot of people do, do get quite far but don't finish it, and that still means that you learn something. So uh, that may not be the only number that counts. But yeah, the, the, finish, uh, the number of people that finish these courses are generally very low, also for Code Academy and other, other um, platforms. Courses are just a stepping stone. Um, they can be a great stepping stone, but it still means that when you're done, don't think you're done. <laughs> there, there, this is just the beginning point, and if you don't proceed from here, the time might very well be wasted. Um, and of course, use other resources. Uh, they're great, it's great if you can um, couple the, the stuff you learn from courses with additional, um, additional materials and exercises and um, other help that you can find maybe online. So, what have I learned about programming? First of all, there are no shortcuts. Anyone who tells you that you can learn C++ in 21 days, or that you can learn something in one hour a day, they're probably lying to you. They're not being straight, so... Um, what else have I learned? Programming is hard, and that is okay. Um, also, Programming is kind of messy, and that is also okay. I was quite frustrated for a while because I felt that there is so much that I still need to learn and probably never will. But I also realized in the, in the course of that that uh, the bigger picture will emerge on, it own, on its own and you cannot rush it. Um, you learn by doing, so do exercises and um, try to find your own projects and work on them. And one last very important thing, find a mentor. Um, I um, fortunately have a boyfriend who knows a lot about programming. I pester him with questions all the time. He's very knowledgeable and very patient, so thanks, your name. <laughs> um, but really, um, you should find someone, oh, sorry. You should find someone who will uh, review your work and maybe criticize it and help you make it better. So if you're trying to learn to, uh, to code, find a mentor. And if you're already great at coding, then be that mentor to someone. Thank you. If you really had to uh, recommend just one of these, uh, regardless of the price, which one mm -hmm. would it be? Yes, I think it would be Linda, because um, while um, it's not as easy, for example, as Code Academy, it still has the basic course as well. So um, basically, like, what would you learn on Code Academy? Would you also learn there? But there's much more, and there's also much more content. Um, so I guess I would invest in that one. Actually, I have. So. In your opinion, uh, what is the comparison between online courses and live courses in, uh, for example, the discipline on in-paid courses? Um, I would say, yes, I've started quite a few that I didn't finish. And if you go to a live course or some workshop, that is definitely more engaging. And likely there will be a lot of people who know uh, about the topic there, so that's very beneficial. Uh, probably it's better if you have an option to go to a workshop, definitely do that.